Bye, bye. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't use that one. Just walk by. Spacewalks. Um, this is probably one of the most state-of-the-art facilities to train for outside maintenance of the ISS, or the International Space Station. Um, originally, this whole building was built in the 80s, uh, roughly around 85. It was originally a packaging and uh, storing facility for Ellington Field over there. Uh, this whole South High Bay which is also a, 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 a little storing facility. Uh, this used to be a giant air hockey table per se to allow the transport of giant uh, pieces of equipment and uh, but now we just use this as storing for mock-ups including that over there that's going to be our new training for the Orion um, it's a mock-up of the mock-up which is not here right now it's going to be in that area uh, that's over at Ellington but that's to train astronauts in case the uh, the capsule was to uh, capsize and they had to do uh, they had to get a feel of what that feels like if they were upside down in the water. Now what you see is only the first 20 feet. So that wall over here, that's just the first 20 feet of the pool. And it goes another 20 feet down. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, so uh, the whole water immersion uh, training, uh, the hyperbaric chamber is mostly for uh, uh, pressurized. So if somebody was to have, if, if there are any divers in the group, they use the hyperbaric chamber to treat decompression sickness. In case if a diver or a, a student subject was to come up with DCS, we throw them in that and bring it back down to depth. Uh, the hypobaric chamber is mostly for training pilots. Uh, they will bring them up to altitude to a uh, minimum 30,000 feet. Their bliss, their primary life support system. They'll hook that backpack up with these, with these latches and then we'll stick a pin in and make sure that they're secure. There's going to be two on each side, or one on each side, two total. Um, and then we lift them up with one of those cranes over there, which you'll see a little bit more of when we get up there. We lift them up and we put them in the water. So each uh, subject has a total of two safety divers and one float diver on them at all times. Uh, the float diver is our underwater camera operator. That's what I started in when I started here. Um, well, you start with your top side, which is more of a top side monitor and voice operator and then you move down to the camera operator. And then I'm about to pass out a safety, which is uh, more of um, pretty much the safety of the student subject throughout the test. So they make sure that they're safe the whole time, if they need some sort of microgravity assist, because we do have tools that are uh, flight grade, and they are uh, all metal. And so obviously we have to counteract the, uh, the, the gravity on that to allow them to, like if they're to let go of something, not, it's best to have them know that it's going to stay there, so we'll provide a 1G assist in certain tools. But we also have uh, volumetric mock-ups to have just uh, so they can get that feel of their suits. So all of the tools you you add buoyancy, you give it a neutral buoyancy? Yes, that's so uh, like these right here in this little place, that's mostly, uh, this is supposed to be the safer. It's kind of like their little jet pack, but we use it both purely for volumetric purposes. Um, and this right here is their pistol grip tool. In orbit, that's all metal. That thing weighs about 50 pounds, uh, probably like 40 pounds. But here on them, they will have a volumetric low fidelity uh, PGT. But then our utility divers, which is our third set of divers, they're basically the tool techs of the run. So they'll, uh, if they need to screw in a bolt, they'll, uh, they'll take that off. Like they'll have them take it off and then they'll do a magic swap. They, we just swap it with an actual working PGT so then they can actually uh, torque in a bolt. 
Hey, and then when we go out to the TC, there's a film in Armageddon where he's like, hey, who's your team? You know, like, well, um, so that's a, we keep those here. It's kind of like a little, little uh, also do that. <laughs> that's just like ancillary. It's just like we trust you to go right, space. Right, so like, like we trust you to go right. in a pool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Schedule. Uh, our oh, wow. schedule. It's it looks like a lot, uh, but after a while you do get an idea. You can kind of know where your name is, and we'll have a number, and that number will correspond to what that duty is. And it's um, it seems like a lot at first, but after a while you kind of know you're like boom, boom, boom. All right, that's what. Um, and then here's a little list of uh, all the divers, uh, a lot of the active divers that we have here. It's definitely been building to the point where we're having to scroll up and down. <laughs> um, and it just kind of gives uh, a quick little bite of who we are. The, some of these need to be updated with hours, but it kind of goes through the different uh, bios of everybody, what their certifications are. In fact, just make sure to kind of stay behind that yellow line because there is a depression and you might fall into It'd be fun once. <laughs> no, <laughs> hard pass. So, my issue with dive supervisor is today. She basically uh, looks over the whole of the coverage uh, diving. She makes sure that everybody's safe to go. And uh, she's all medical. Or That's our uh, Artemis uh, for the winter. Oh, that's a better. Yeah. Even though they don't make lights. Um, <laughs> all of them connect for them. Okay. And they have like little tools that kind of give them ideas. We have things that we use uh, up there. You can see a couple of those shoes. The mannequin over there, he's wearing something that they call a uh, liquid cool ventilation garment. They're also doing Yeah, so it looks like they turned the cameras on. So um, here's a we have uh, cameras in throughout the whole pool. Um, we also have underwater speakers so we can hear the suited subjects as well as the uh, test conductors. Only we can't speak to the astronauts, but we can hear what they're saying. Um, these panels right here we just uh, put in the pool. Um, these uh, we can actually elevate, you know, put the an incline on it so. Um, once we get the uh, the, the lunar runs uh, really up and moving, they'll be able to walk up those. So that's um, what this is for, is for walking on yes. the moon simulation? Exactly. That's fine. I'll, I'll try to keep my job. Here, so I'll yes. ask that question. And this is why. Someone Someone is 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 exactly. Yeah, we have to wear it because it's all fiberglass, so we have to wear protection if we were to ever take that apart. Um, um, also in our SSRMS. Now, there's only three in the world. There's one here, there's one in Canada, and there's one in Oregon. This is Palo Alto. Yeah, that's one of the rooms where they filmed, I think, Armageddon.
Thanks.